Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in PECRAS. And in this lesson, I'm going to be discussing 2D internal and external boundary conditions. So uh, what we have on the screen here is the HEC RAS mapper. This is a model that I've already created with a background terrain layer. That's what you're seeing for the colors. And then this blue line here is the center line of the river reach. I've got a couple of red bank lines, and then the yellow lines here are the cross-section data. I'm going to toggle off the terrain data real quick. So now you can see the red bank lines a little bit better, as well as the 2D mesh that I've added in. It is a 300 um, cell spacing over here in the overbank, and then also a 100 foot cell spacing in the main channel. Okay, so that's a little bit of a background of the model itself. Let's talk about the boundary conditions. You can sketch out boundary conditions here in RAS Mapper or in the geometric data editor. So if you go up to edit geometric data, then your geometric data should appear. If it doesn't, then yeah, go edit geometric data or click on this. Uh, this button right here, view slash edit geometric data. This editor box will appear somewhere on the screen. And then you may need to also go file, open geometry data, and then select your geometry file that you've already created and save those changes in over in RAS Mapper. All right, so here is the same model. I've actually modified the color for that 2D flow area. So if you want your model to like look less blue and more transparent, like when I have it here, you're going to want to go to edit lines and symbols and then i just changed the 2d uh, scheme 2d from this solid color the screen color like this which you're used to seeing let me go ahead and change it back now so edit lines and symbols scheme 2d and then make it clear i think that's clear all right so i'm back to where i want it to be while i'm at it i'm gonna you can see the blue river line here but it's kind of hard to tell there's no bank lines in this view there's little red dots on the cross sections but there are green cross section lines so I'm going to go ahead and make those colors a little bit darker. Just go up here, the so river scheme right here. I'm just going to go ahead and make this a thicker line. 4.5, I think, is the thickest. Okay, so I can see the river a little better. And then let's go for the cross sections. That's this green line here. I have no problem keeping them green. But let's just go ahead and maybe make it thicker. All right, that's good. All right, we're talking about external and internal boundary conditions in HECRAS, specifically for... 2D models, like what we have on the screen here. Our options for external boundary conditions are flow hydrographs, stage hydrograph, normal depths, and rating curve. Normal depths and rating curves are only for flow leaving the boundary. And then uh, flow and stage hydrograph are for either leaving or entering. For internal boundary conditions, our options will be flow hydrograph or precipitation. And we'll see examples of that in just a moment. First, we need to sketch out the boundary condition line. So what I'm going to do is say the river is flowing in the westward direction, north is up. So that means flow is going to be coming in from this east boundary and then leading from the west boundary. What I'm going to do is click on this BC lines button up here and then sketch out the boundary condition line. I'm going to make it along the entire length of this east boundary. So let's see, just go ahead and do a click. So now I can make multiple clicks or just double click when I'm done editing. So I'm going to just do another click there. I'm going to hold down shift and then left mouse to pan up and then zoom in here and then double click. Okay, I'm going to call that in uh, upstream boundary and click OK. I'm going to do the same thing for the downstream boundary. So let's pan over to the west edge of this model. Let me zoom in a little bit. Click on BC lines again, single left click to start. Let me do another click there and pan down and then double click right here. Then I'll give that the name downstream boundary. I'll click OK. All right, that looks good. The user manual does mention that two different external boundaries cannot be attached to the same cell face. So what you see here is we now have this dark black line that represents the cell face boundary for that downstream boundary condition. It says downstream boundary, but very small right there. And then on the upstream end, I should have a similar black line that's bold and that represents my upstream boundary. All right, let's go ahead and save those changes and then go up to the Unsteady Flow Editor. So I'm going to go up to Eddy, Edit, Unsteady Flow Data. This is where I make changes to the boundary conditions. And I actually have some data in here already from when I was preparing for this lesson. Here is the upstream boundary condition. Here's the downstream boundary condition. So whichever one we select, then we're going to want to go ahead and make a selection up here for stage hydrograph, flow hydrograph, rating curve, or normal depth. 
Say, for instance, our upstream boundary condition, we want it to be a flow hydrograph. I'll go ahead and click on flow hydrograph. This warning message here just tells me that it's going to overwrite any of the existing data I had assigned for that boundary condition previously with the rating curve. Yes, that's fine. And now I get a dialog box where I get to define that boundary condition. So our two main options is these two radio buttons, either read from a DSS file or enter the data manually into this dialog box. So if we're entering from a DSS file, what we do is click this DSS file path. Now keep in mind, this is gonna be a time series data set with flow records. And for flow hydrograph, for 2D boundary conditions, a positive flow value means water is flowing into the 2D flow area through that boundary. And if it's a negative flow value, then water is uh, leaving that 2D flow area through that boundary. All right, we don't have any files or paths loaded yet, so I'm going to go ahead and click this button to add a path. Go ahead and navigate to the DSS file that has that flow data. I only have two paths to save in this particular DSS file. I just created this, but you'll go ahead and select the one you want, which is this first one here, flow, and then click OK. And then now I have that DSS file and file path with the flow data associated with it, ready to go for the simulation. If you're going this route with PSS data, you need to make sure that the time step and the, sorry, the start time is consistent with the start time of the actual simulation run so that you're not off by a month or a year or 10 years or something like that. All right, the other option for entering data here is doing so manually. So if I click this radio button to enter the data manually, I have to first choose the simulation start time. So the default is just use the simulation time. So that means this first record here co coincides with the first time step of the simulation data. And that's when we go to run unsteady flow analysis and then enter the starting data here. Okay. Um, and then the other option here is I can manually set the start time by clicking this radio button, fix start time, and then enter the date and the time. And that will be the first row of this table right here. So for instance, if I wanted this to start on January 2020 at 0, 0.00 hours, I can hit tab. And then that has been updated right there. That's the time. Did that update? Let me go ahead and just change the year real quick. Yeah, it, it updated. So go back to what we had it. All right, then I just go ahead and type in the flow rates here. So whatever the numbers are, then I go ahead and do that. When using the flow hydrograph method, the total flow rate is distributed to individual flow rates for each cell based on the geometry of the cell and the boundary line. And then during low flow, there's a, a possibility that there will be no flow in every single cell along the boundary line. Not all cells along the boundary line may have flow or a wetted perimeter. All right, so I'll go ahead and click OK. Our next option for a boundary condition here is stage hydrograph. And then I'll click yes. It looks like a similar interface that we saw before. We have the option to read in ESS data. Now, in this case, instead of being flow data, like in CFS, it's going to be water surface elevation, which would probably be in feet for those using English units. And then you also have the option to enter the data via a table with the same two time controls here. And again, the data you would enter is the water surface elevation or the stage of that of the water at that boundary condition. Now, as far as flow leaving or entering the 2D flow area, um, instead of it being negative and positive flows like we saw for the flow hydrograph, when using stage hydrograph, the stage that's defined here in the boundary condition is compared with the water surface elevation in the model. And if the stage here in the boundary condition is higher, then flow is going to be entering the 2D flow area. If the stage uh, here in the boundary condition is below uh, that which is in the model, then there will be flow exiting the 2D flow area. The total flow rate into and out of the boundary condition is computed on a cell-by-cell -cell basis. Water may flow into some cells and then out of other cells along the same boundary condition. You can also click on this checkbox at the bottom here that says use initial stage, and it says that it's recommended. And then there's a long label right there I'm not going to read, but it is recommended. And it's used to set the initial value for that elevation. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. The next option here for a boundary condition is normal depth. So the, the last two, normal depth and rating curve, are really only for flows exiting the 2D flow area. So I'll click on normal depth, which is right here. It's giving me this warning again. 
All right, so what I need to do here is just type in the energy grade line or the friction slope, which is, could be, is the energy grade line, but it can be approximated by the slope of the channel itself. And then below that, I need to make the selection of whether or not that uh, calculation is going to happen for each individual cell or for all the cells along the boundary condition line. Okay, I'll click OK. And then the last is the last uh, the rating curve. So for rating curve, uh, again, we can put in the stage versus flow data via a ESS cap or just manually right here. And then that would define the rating curve for that boundary condition. All right, next to talk about internal boundary conditions. I'm going to go ahead and close this editor for just a moment. Internal boundary conditions are just like they sound. They're not on the edge. They're basically going to be cutting through different cells on the map. So if I wanted to do that, I'd put the same DT lines, boundary condition lines up here in the editor. And then I'm just going to go ahead and sketch a line through my 2D flow area. So I'm going to zoom in. I'll do a single left click right here near the boundary, but I'm going through the interior of the 2D flow area. So I'm going to click, click, you know, pan, then click, click, and then maybe a double click right here. Okay, I'm going to give that the name internal boundary and click OK. Now, if I zoom out, you can see that we don't have a single black line representing the boundary. That internal boundary now has a number of cells. Every cell that that line intersected with is now has a dark and full boundary to it. So the line itself is this cyan line. It's kind of small, but hard to see. But then the cells here, you can see have that black boundary associated with it. Over in RAS Mapper, we can also add boundary condition lines. So let me go ahead and go File, Save Geometry. I'm going to bring up the RAS Mapper. And then I'm going to click on my geometry, click Edit. And then yeah, I need to toggle on the boundary condition lines right here. All right. So they are, there's one of them. There's the other. And then the internal one is hard to see, but it's right there. I can also graph my own boundary condition lines within the RAS Mapper. If you do that, I would just go ahead and click on this Add New Feature. Make sure I'm in Edit Mode. Make sure I have Boundary Condition Layer selected. And let's go ahead and just sketch in a separate internal boundary condition line right here. So, and double click. I'm going to go ahead and call this Internal Boundary 2 and click OK. And there's my second internal boundary condition line. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the edits, save the edits. And this is now what my view looks like in RASNAP. All right, so now let's go ahead and define that internal boundary condition. I'm going to go up to Edit, Unsteady Flow Data. We now have records for the internal boundary 2 and internal boundary. So for internal boundary, we, our options are hydrograph or precipitation. I'll get the precipitation in just a moment. It does look great out now, but um, there's one thing we have to do to um, get that option selectable. For the internal boundary, I'm going to go ahead and click on Flow Hydrograph. With the button for flow hydrograph that will bring up the editor and there's really nothing different between what you're seeing here on this screen for flow hydrograph and what you saw for the external boundary condition internal and external is really just the same again if it's a positive value it will be adding flow to the 2d flow area if it's a negative value for the flow rate it would be removing that amount of flow along that internal boundary condition line if internal boundary condition line covered multiple cells as is the case for both of our internal boundary condition lines. The flow rate that is specified in the hydrograph data is commensurate with the percentage of the line's length crossing over that cell. So for that reason, you may not want your internal boundary condition lines to be crossing over the entire length. You may just want it to be within the main channel, but I drew, drew them both covering the entire cross-section. Also, the internal boundary condition line should be drawn perpendicular to the direction of flow to avoid what is called double routing. All right, so I've done that as well. These internal boundary condition lines are, for the most part, perpendicular to the direction of flow. And what you may say is parallel to the cross-section lines. All right, the, the other internal boundary condition option here is precipitation. So we have that right here. If you don't have uh, a 2D flow area selected, what you want to do is click this button here, add storage area slash 2D flow area. And then you can go ahead and click on the 2D flow area, select it, and then go ahead and click OK. OK, so I have a second one that I just added in right here. I'll go ahead and click it, click on precipitation, 
And now what we have is a way to define the precipitation in inches for each time period here. Now I've been using hours, but you can change the time step to 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, it goes down to one second and then the maximum value is one year. So something like one day or an hour or a minute is probably a more common. Probably just one hour or maybe 15 minutes in the case of precipitation data. And then we can go ahead and specify that precipitation by defining the data here in a DSS path, like precipitation incremental. So I could go ahead and click OK right there. Or I could select Enter Table, this radio button, and then insert the precipitation depths in the table right here. This precipitation method does not allow for spatial variability over the 2D flow area. It's only going to drop a constant amount of precipitation for all areas, but it is temporally distributed. So you could ramp up the precipitation and then ramp it down, but it can't be varied spatially, at least not using this tool. All right, well, that was it for this lesson. What we talked about was the internal and external boundary conditions for 2D flow areas in TechRAS.